Hey guys, welcome back. So for some of you who've been following my channel for a while, you might recognize this engine. Uh, this one actually came off a storm responder that had run out of oil and it blew the connecting rod. But upon disassembly, things looked pretty good. The cylinder was fairly clean and the block had survived. So I made the decision to buy a new connecting rod, new piston, clean things up and put it back together. So by the end of that video, I had a good running engine, so I thought. But fast forward to the second video where I actually put this on another generator that had a blown engine, I quickly realized that this engine was knocking. And that really shouldn't be a surprise. I haven't rebuilt too many engines, and at the time, I did not have the proper tools to measure things up, but I now do, and I have measured the journal on that crankshaft, and it is out of spec. Also, I have this other crankshaft right here, which also came out of another storm responder that ran out of oil, and that one's also out of spec. So those crankshafts can't be used, but... You know, I've caught up on pretty much everything else. This is really the only thing left. So I want to revisit this and see if I can't get a good engine out of it. And even though these crankshafts are bad, I still have a couple options. I've got two more engines that ran out of oil that both have crankshafts. Potentially, one of them is good. So I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to break these engines down, get the cranks out, and see if we can't find one that's viable. I think I changed my mind on this one. I am gonna record at least taking apart one of these engines. I'll try to make it fairly quick and we'll uh, see what that crank looks like.
The head's in pretty good shape. You know, sometimes when the connecting rod lets go, the piston smashes into the valves when they're open. But in this case, they look good. Well, at least this one has a little bit of oil left in it. So I give this one a slightly better chance than the others. Well, it's not too pretty but it could still be good. A lot of aluminum transferred onto the crank. So until we get that aluminum off, we can't measure it up and see what we have. Yeah, the piston surprisingly is intact. I don't see any cracks, the skirts are not broken. You know, there is some, some lines here, but overall the piston fared pretty well, all things considered. Usually I use muriatic acid to melt off the aluminum. You know, I've done that in the past, it's worked good for me, but several people have warned me not to do that. And they suggested using sodium hydroxide, which is otherwise known as lye or oven cleaner. So I'm always open to new suggestions. I thought I'd give it a try. But after visiting four stores today, I came up empty. So I don't know if there's some sort of a shortage due to the pandemic or people just don't clean their ovens anymore. Anyway, I have a gallon of muriatic acid. That's what I'm going to use. I think the important thing is here is to neutralize the acid when you're done and don't let it soak for too long, or else you could cause pitting or even rust on the crank. Been about 10 minutes. I'm just gonna pull it off and see how we're making out. Yeah, still got a ways to go. We'll try another 10 minutes. So it's been a total of 30 minutes. You know, every 10 minutes I change that out, check on kind of how things are going, and during each 10 minute interval, I do have to apply a little bit more acid just to keep it kind of fresh and active. Anyway, I think we're probably done now. I'm just gonna get that off and see, see how it looks. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean the rest of this up, starting with some 800 grit and then 1500 and 3000.
I'm not liking too much what I'm seeing. There is a gouge there. I'm not sure what that is. Looks like a scratch there and there. Maybe something there. Yeah, so it doesn't look great. I'm going to stand this a bit longer, see if it gets any better. Been working at this for about five minutes, still with the 800 grit, and it making good progress, but there is still, you know, Nick. A rough surface there and another scratch right there. So it's it's not terrible. You know, if I was just rebuilding this for myself, I'd probably go with it. But I'm not building it for myself. I'm going to build it and sell it to someone else. So I'm leaning toward not using this. But let's measure it up and see if we have enough meat left. I took two sets of measurements off the crankshaft, three in this direction and three in that direction. And according to this, the reject size is 1.2475. The left to right measurements are all very consistent and within spec, but the top to bottom don't look so good. And this one in particular on the flywheel side is actually out of spec by five ten thousand. So you know, that combined with the damage that's on here, you know, I don't think I should use this crank. I guess the one confusing thing here is that, you know, this is from a actual Briggs service manual. So I, I tend to believe what's on here. This chart is commonly available on the internet. And for this engine, it actually lists the reject size at 1.2465, which would actually put this within spec by a thousandth. So not sure why there's a discrepancy, but there is, you know, regardless, don't feel good using that. So, you know, before ordering a new crankshaft, I do want to double check the lobes on the camshaft and the cylinder. Actually, I have previously checked. Uh, Ken was here a few weeks ago from Ken's small engine. He was kind enough to bring his bore gauge and we confirmed that the cylinder was good and not out of round. So yeah, let's get the, uh, the camshaft out of the block and double check that. Yeah, 1.212 is the reject size on both these lobes. That one's good. And so is that one. Okay, the reject size on this is 0.498. Yeah, and this is no good. We're undersized. So I have another camshaft. Let's check that one. Yeah, that's good. Let's check this side. Okay, this one's looking better. I'm just going to double check these lobes, but I think this one's going to be the winner.
That's good. Okay, well, the original camshaft is out of spec right here. Uh, luckily, I have a few of them, and this one measures up fine. So I'll use that. We'll get a new crankshaft ordered and throw this thing together. Well, surprisingly, this only came in a day, courtesy of Amazon. So let's see what we got. It's a little disappointing. <laughs> Jesus. It's a mess. Holy cow. That is awful. Yeah, not too impressed. Uh, the cardboard... You know, a lot of lint and stuff came off. The journal itself was covered in that cardboard lint. But it's not perfect either. I do see a bunch of little nicks. I mean, nothing I can feel, but still. You buy something new, you expect it to be perfect. Anyway, let me spend a minute, just clean that up, and uh, get going on this thing. And worthy a note here, there is an arrow pointing toward the flywheel side. That also corresponds with the connecting rod where it says mag. So both of those need to be facing toward the flywheel.
And for this connecting rod, it should be tightened to 100 inch pounds. Well, so much for new. These weights, I think, are rubbing on the connecting rod. That's no good. Yeah, I think we're good. No more noise with the cover on, but I mean the clearance must be really tight. So, okay, let's finish this thing up. And make sure you line those up or it's not going to run. And there's another discrepancy for the crankcase cover. This says 200 inch pounds. And that's what I did the first time I rebuilt this. I didn't have this manual at the time, but the crankcase cover on this one is 100 inch pounds. So, you know, I did a 200 last time, nothing stripped out. I think I'm going to go with the 200. One thing to note, all these bolts are the same length, but one of them is black and that one goes right below the exhaust port.
Yeah, the valves need to be adjusted, but I'm gonna get the, the flywheel and just the recoil assembly on, and it'll, it'll make it a little bit easier to pull this over. We'll adjust the valves and check the compression. And you just want to snug these up. They strip out real easy, so go easy on them. Going to adjust the valves now. So I'm going to find top dead center of the compression stroke. And the clearance on both of these valves is the same. It should be between four and six thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to aim for five.
pretty good. Six doesn't fit. A five does. So these do have a compression release, and generally they come in at around 60 PSI. So let's give this a try and see where we're at. And we're right at 60. It's perfect. So you know what's next. Let's get this outside and start it up. So I'd call this one a win. It took a couple tries, but it's running well now. And that's a good thing because I just picked up another storm responder yesterday with a blown engine. So this one's gonna be put to use pretty quick, but that'll be a different video. For now, I think I'm done. Hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.